Hey, good morning. It's Mike again. All right, so uh, we're getting right back into this. We're going to be getting into the wonderful world of annotating with tags. Now we're going to be able to derive, extract a lot of this embedded data and these embedded attributes and uh, parameters from these intelligent objects that we're putting on the, in the model. I'll get your coffee. Uh, start up your Revit software, if it's not already started. And shelter in place, right? Shelter in place. All right, so yeah, annotating with tags. And please, um, remind me to keep these videos short so that if someone's looking for a solution that's under the gun, that uh, when they find it, they don't have to sit through a 45-minute video. I know, I know, it's sometimes difficult to explain a concept in the short duration that, that we have, so um, I'm aware of that, but I'll try to keep this one as, as concise as I can and break it up into parts so that um, whoever it is that's under the gun can find a solution to their, uh, whatever it is that's uh, troubling them. Okay, so tags are text labels for elements such as doors, walls, windows, rooms, and several other objects that architects typically need to reference in a set of drawings. In Revit architecture, tags are intelligent, bi-directional graphics that report information stored in an object's properties. Once you've tagged an element and entered a value in the tag, the tag model element will retain that value until you remove it. The value lives with the model in a project. It is not a property of the tag, unlike AutoCAD Architecture or MEP, where uh, it's a property set definition. That means you can delete or remove tags without the fear of losing the data entered into the tag, meaning you know, if it stays within the project, you have to keep setting the style, right? To a certain extent. Uh, the value lives within the model elements. Uh, it is not a property of the tag. That means you can delete it or remove tags without the fear of losing the data in the tag. It also means that once an element is tagged with information in one view, if the tag is configured to report a type property, the same or similar elements will report the same information in any other view in which they're tagged without the necessity of entering the information twice. To understand this is a bit better. Take uh, the example of a wall tag. You've placed a wall tag in a view. The tag initially had a question mark as a value, meaning that the type mark property for that wall was blank. In the wall tag, you've entered a wall type with a wall type value of A1. In another view, you can now tag the same wall type and it will automatically, be, automatically display a value of A1. You can also set, uh, also delete any or even all of the tags for that wall, and new tags you place will still report the type number of A1. Keep in mind that you can also tag elements that are in linked models, although you can not edit the properties of these elements. For example, you can't change the wall type or door per number. You can add tags to any of the linked elements as if the same elements were part of your project file. Right? Isn't that fantastic? Tags are versatile elements for annotating your designs. A tag can display a door number, but it can just as easily display any other properties of the door, such as fire rating, cost, or material type. Inserting tags. Tags can be automatically inserted when a model element, such as a door or room, is placed within the project by checking the tag on placement option. So let's get... um. Let's get something going here. Um, let's try uh, annotating start. Because they don't give any examples until later on in the chapter. So, but they, they have, well, the book wants you to be able to navigate around the, the ribbons. So uh, before I go any further, I wanted to just start up the C19 sample building start project from the book's companion website. And anybody who's following me all knows where that is. Get your coffee. It's going to be a long day. We're sheltered in. we got a tropical storm coming up the East Coast. Okay, so uh, annotate. And you can see there's a, lot, there's a tag to, uh, panel. Okay, so the option is to place a tag are all located on the tag panel of the annotate tab. When you're adding tags, it's not necessary to find or choose the right tag. They will be assigned automatically. Tag families are specific to the elements to which they are being tagged. 
For example, you use a door tag to tag a door, but you can't use a door tag to tag a wall or other element within a project. The figure I'm about to show you shows some of the tags that are available. There's a tag for each type of object. You can customize each of the tag family types so you can graphically differentiate your door tags from wall tags, room tags, area tags, and so on. So if I was to uh, just go, let's say tag, and I was to go to tags here, and you'll look, loaded in this project are uh, not many tags. You see there's a a window tag, a, a view tag, a room tag, a sheet tag, if you will, a door tag, and an area tag. But that's, that's just within the architectural realm, if I was to turn all these on, in the other uh, disciplines. You'll see there's a few more, but not many. But again, don't fret not, because your template will have all the tags that you need, because you can create them as families, annotation families, and they can load them into your project. Now, if you notice from the, uh, the library, uh, and this is the path, you can see that um, from the onset, you don't see a category for tags. This might discourage you, you might get lost. Uh, but as you scroll down, and this is more my fault than yours, um, these haven't been placed in the right directory yet, but you can see there's a couple of tags uh, in the root directory here. Um, but if you go to annotation, uh, you'll see there's a whole host of tags, right? A whole host of tags. Mass tag, multi-category tag. And the more you drill down, the more you'll see. This is within the architectural realm. Material tag, specialty equipment tag, tear, stair support tag. And we can go through these a little bit. In the civil planting tags, uh, in the civil aspect, electrical tags. And as you can see, there's a, there's a bunch, right? There's a bunch. Conduit. And again, these play an important role in coordination. I combine the top and bottom conduit tag into one, as opposed to having a bottom elevation and a top elevation. Um, and that could be helpful. Um, it is helpful. That could be. It is. And uh, same thing for cable tray. Anyway, so let me go back up, take a look at uh, fire protection tags, sprinkler symbols, uh, symbols uh, these are symbols, no tags here. Um, and you can create them for uh, fire protection as well. Diffuser tag, mechanical equipment tag. This is a sprinkler tag again. Space tags. And we have some more on the piping, as you can see. And we'll take one more look at structural. As you see, there's a bunch, right? There's a bunch. All right, so again, you're not limited to just what's loaded into the project. You could. Uh, you can load in your own, and, and these are accessible in the family uh, browser. If I collapse the project browser a little bit, and I uh, take a look at the families, you can also see what t tags, excuse me, are loaded within the project. So you can see them right here under annotation symbols, right? Uh, and, and that's what you got for starters out of the box. But again, highly customizable platform. Highly customizable platform. Now, um, when inserting a tag, you have several placement options available in the options bar as shown. Now, let me just see if I can get a good tag going here. There's an area tag. Um, I didn't see a wall tag. So let me um, let me just see if I can get a... When you tag by category, you'll see um, you can attach a leader. This is within the context of invoking the command within the, uh, the, the an options bar will pop up. And you'll see you can attach the tag with a leader. Um, uh, and then there's a few other options that um, I'm going to read through here that you can understand. The first one being orientation. The first option allows you to orientate the tag horizontally or vertically. Tags, like text, will always read from either bottom, from either the bottom or right side of the sheet view. So horizontal or vertical. Um, and then the tags button. Just clicking this button opens the loaded tags and symbols dialog box, which we just discussed previously. Um, let's just take, come down here to uh, walls. And if you come here, there's no tag loaded for walls, right? We could load a family for walls, right? Annotations. 
see if you can find it. It always is a, a challenge sometimes if you don't have it uh, set up. Oh, there, it was right there. I, I just missed it. There's a wall tag right there. So then, as you can see, in walls, you'll see now there's a tag available. Now, you may load one tag and see that you have more than one available. In this case, two text heights, quarter inch and half inch, I believe. Um, no, not half inch. Uh, we'll see what... Oh, I'm sorry, that's actually the size of the tag. You wouldn't put half inch text on a drawing, unless, of course, you were maybe putting it on a cover sheet. Uh, silly man. I guess me having another sip of coffee. All right, so uh, that's how uh, the t t t that's how the tag button works. Let me just hit that OK for that. Uh, now, uh, hold on a second. And if the the, the wall is embedded with that information, um, then you'll get the uh, you'll be able to extract what information it is that that the the, the, the wall property. Uh, allows. So hold that button. Um, the uh, leader button, the final three options are related to the leader tag. You can select the leader checkbox or turn it off to have a leader shown or not shown. So as you can see here, it's shown. If I uncheck the box, it's not shown. Right? Although attached leaders are the default for tags, the leader dropdown can be changed from attached end or free end if you don't want to associate the end of the leader with the element you selected. And we'll get into this a little more. It'll get, it does actually. Using the free end option allows the leader to float free of the object. The final option of this set for leaders is the default leader length. By default, the value is set to half inch. When you're placing tags like wall tags that have leaders perpendicular to the wall they are tagging, it is a good idea to set the default length with which you are comfortable. You can adjust the tag location after inserting them, but sometimes it's easier to set a good default value in leader length. Like keynotes from the previous section, annotation, annotation tags can be printed, can be pinned. A pinned tag will retain its location even if the element it has tagged has been relocated. This can be beneficial to keep small changes to elements from impacting several views prior to a deadline, but it can be equally prob prob problematic by allowing elements that have been dramatically changed to look uh, incorrectly tagged. So, um, again, I'm just going to take the window. Now, this is a category here, tag, um, tag all, and we'll get into this. But I wanted to stop this video short because this is getting started or the introduction to tagging in your uh, project. We're going to be getting into the using the tag tool set. And that's something that um, we'll save for the next uh, video series. So um, if someone's trying to get acclimated to this, uh, they don't have to dig through a 40 minute video to not get what it is uh, they're looking for when they're trying to get a search result to return something that'll uh, help them while they're under the gun. Again, architecture is the study of space and how much time we have. So for expedition purposes, I think that would be prudent. In any event, stick around, stay tuned. There's more to come. We're getting close to the end. So any of you MEP gearheads out there and uh, any of you plant uh, managers that are into, uh, into uh, pipelines and process uh, plant process piping, we're going to be getting into plant too. Just, uh, just uh, let's continue and practice our, uh, our mantra of nonchalance, right? We've got to somehow get to that, that level of nonchalance, like, uh, you know, the ones that walk around the office to do anything, uh, but uh, coexist within the realm of nepotism. <laughs>